now in questions of inequality there are also questions related to modulus of a number so let's look what modulus of a number is or what's absolute value of a number the absolute value of a real number is denoted by this which is also said as mod x now first of all mod x is always a positive quantity okay so since it is a positive quantity it is represented it is equal to x when x is positive and it is minus x when x is negative now since mod x is always positive i can write mod x is greater than equal to x okay mod x will be greater than x when x is negative mod x is equal to x when x is positive so mod x is greater than equal to x the other inequalities related to modulus of a number are this this inequality is also known as the triangle inequality we'll see the proof of this inequality when we study vectors because in vectors in the starting topics of vector this inequality is mentioned so we'll see the solution or the proof of this inequality when we study vectors another inequality related to this is mod of a minus b is greater than mod of mod of a minus mod of b this is also known as the triangle inequality okay. now let's solve some problems in inequalities related to absolute value of a real number the first question this question we asked to find the value of x for which this condition is satisfied okay. so whenever you get questions like this okay first of all let's see what are the options given the options given are the fourth option is none of this so in questions related to absolute value of a real number whenever you get questions like this one of the approach you can take is since you have modular modulus on both the sides one of the methods to get rid of this mod sign is squaring both the sides so let's see let's square both the sides since this is a positive quantity this is a positive quantity squaring will keep this point positive quantities inequality as it is so i square both the sides take this to this side you'll get okay now this is in the form of a square minus b square so you can expand this and you'll get or you can write okay now the roots are minus 2 by 3 and 4 here it will be positive here negative here positive so my answer is this range so the answer will be x lies in the interval minus 2 by 3 to 4 okay 
So option A is the correct option. So now let's take one last example in this topic and then we'll move on to the next topic. Question 2. The question is to find the value of x for which x square plus 3x mod plus x square minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. The options which have been given to me are So we have talked a lot about inequalities. I would suggest you to try this question on your own. You pause the video, try this question on your own and then you can play the video and see the solution. Okay. Now here you have a mod sign. First of all to start with this question you first need to get rid of the modulus sign because if, if you don't get rid of the sign. We don't know what the value of x is because how do you solve this if you don't get rid of this? The first task is to get rid of this modulus sign. Okay. How to do that? One of the approach which we had discussed in the last problem was we squared both the sides. But here you see squaring will make it more complicated. If I square this expression by bringing x square minus 2 to this side, I will get a 4 degree polynomial. I don't want that. The better approach will be we, I, to use the basic knowledge of mod which says mod x is equal to x if x is positive and mod s equals to minus x if x is negative. So I will say I will assume that x square plus 3x is positive first and I will just remove the mod sign then I will assume that x square plus 3x is negative and then again I will put a minus sign there. Okay, so. Let's take the first case when is positive. Now, since we have assumed that x squared plus 3x is positive, is greater than equal to 0, the solution which we get using this condition should also satisfy this. Suppose I get x equals to, let's say, minus 1. Assuming this condition, let's say I get the solution x equals to minus 1. But will that solution be correct? No, it won't be correct because if I get, if I am getting a solution x equals to minus 1, then this condition is itself not true. If x is equal to minus 1, you see that this is a negative quantity. So this condition is itself not true. So using whatever we have come to the conclusion that x equal to minus 2, if that only holds, doesn't hold good, then this is also false. You understand my point? Whatever solution I get using this expression should also satisfy this expression. Okay. Now, if this condition has to hold good, then x should be right in this range, x should belong to Okay, now let me ask you a basic question. Whenever I am writing x belong is greater than 3 to infinity in this range, why am I putting an open interval at in this case? Why do I put an open interval in case of infinity? This is because in infinity, infinity we don't know the number which is infinity, right? It's a very large number but we don't know exactly what the value of that number is. So since we don't know the value of this number, we can't say what that exactly, what that extreme point is. So that's why we put an open interval at this case. Okay. Okay. So this is the condition which should be satisfied. Now, if this is true, then we get x squared plus 3x. Because this is positive, we'll just remove the bond sign. This is greater than equal to 0. 
from this we can factorize this if i factorize this i'll get the factors as minus 2 and half then again we use our number line and minus 2 is half this is the and this is the ring so x belongs to inclusive of 2 half 2 yeah. we are including this value of 2 and half because here is a equality sign ok now we need to look at values from this interval which are also in this interval we need to take a union of these two so the answer will be x belongs to minus infinity till minus c sorry here it will be minus sign okay from minus sign. union of half to infinity 